Hello there, Seraphim17 once again. This is my Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption video walkthrough. This is the final sin, the final boss of the game. It's called Adam. This is probably the most disappointing boss in the game, in my opinion. And it's, it's purely because I feel like it, it comes across as a little bit lazy. This boss is essentially yourself, and they have a bunch of, of additional moves that you do not have and additional properties. But other than that, it's just kind of really easy to to manipulate this boss. And a lot of his attacks, it's easier to dodge them than it is to get hit by them because of the way that they work. It's, it's very fascinating, actually. It's difficult to, to understand it unless you've, you've fought against him, but a lot of things will miss you naturally just because of the way this boss tracks. And sometimes by trying to dodge it, you will dodge into it, so the less is kind of more in this encounter. And then the second thing you need to watch out for, which I really, really don't like, is the boss has the ability to buff himself with something called Immolation. And every so often as his armor builds up this firepower, it explodes in a passive AoE, and it can and it just does it naturally on, on some, some kind of timer, but the timer seems a little bit vague. So you can just take damage when you're punishing him, which is really frustrating. And on top of that, he has the ability to roll out of any punishers at any given moment, but he only does it once in this recording. So at the beginning, run up to him, bait the one-handed attack, and then parry it. Then attack him after the parry by doing a running R2. Whenever he taunts like that, it means he's powering up. So hit him with a punish, and then parry him when he swings with the one-handed. Chase him down with the running attack. If he backs away, he's going to pull out his second sword. I've never parried this sword. I don't know if it can be done. Um, in this phase, I focus on punishing him instead. And the best move to punish is when he runs towards you really quickly and does the big overhead. When he does that, if you run towards his left shoulder or even walk towards it, you will dodge this move. Because it's so aggressive and it has so much forward momentum, he will naturally miss you with that move more so than hit you if you just sidestep it. It's really, really strange. And then when he does that, he powers up again, so punish it. And then when he buffs his sword in the air, do a running R2. After this, he will always cast Immolation, which is what that animation just then was. And now, all I'm going to do, guys, is bait him into doing the running attack. The running attack has really funny properties, because as long as you run around it, or step aside it, you don't have to move now. His second hit will never track correctly and hit you, so you can use that as an opportunity to hit him once, stop your combo, and then move forward, and then hit him twice to guarantee all three hits actually land. But did you see the explosion then? That's the immolation. The reason I'm using so much space when I'm punishing him is because I don't want to trade with that stupid move. And then all the other stuff that he does is really well telegraphed, so just run away from it. You can punish it, but never punish this boss from in front. If you attack him from in front, he will parry you almost every single time in the second to third phase. Never do it, guys. It's not worth it. Wait for that move, and then punish this move. The only thing to be aware of, again, is that there are moments when he'll get out of your combo. It's not consistent. It doesn't make sense why he suddenly is able to do it, but all the other times he wasn't. It's just kind of really strange. And here he comes again. And if you want to try and condition his AI to do the running attack, if he gives you a shit pattern, throw a javelin at him at range, and he usually always runs towards you. If you're getting hit by that running attack when he comes towards you and it's not working and it doesn't make sense, you're not getting hit by the attack. You're getting hit by the immolation detonating and that's catching you as you move past the boss. The only reason this move that I'm dodging and punishing should ever hit you is if you get hit by what he just did then, that passive explosion. Because this, and do you see the roll? Whenever he rolls away like that, it usually means he's going to sprint at you and do that same move. And, as evidenced in that video, this boss is incredibly easy to manipulate. It's kind of strange. I was really hoping for a much more momentous final encounter, but maybe for you it is really epic and it's really cool and you like it a lot. I just found it to be kind of hilarious, but that just could be because of my experience with playing these kind of games and analysing these kind of bosses. But, I hope the video has helped. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, you take care now.